This tutorial is designed to teach you how to use Academic Search Complete. We're going to find it by clicking Articles and Databases on the library homepage and logging in uh, with our student ID number, which is also your banner number, um, as the borrower ID, and the password is the last four digits of your social security number. So go ahead and hit log in. And what that's going to do is bring you to this subject list of databases. Um, so there's two ways to find any database. You can find it within the subjects, or you can come up here and click alphabetical. And in our case, Academic Search Complete um, is right up here at the very top of this list. So very easy to find no matter um, which way um, you go about it. Uh, the other place that it's most commonly found on the subject list is under the general heading. So I'm going to click general about halfway down the page here. And again, you'll see Academic Search Complete. You'll notice here that there's this little blue eye. And this guy is pretty helpful for um, Academic Search and other databases because what it'll do is it'll give you a description of what we're searching. So you can see um, Academic Search Complete is pretty big. Um, has over 5,000 journals and goes back to the 1800s. So it's a big, broad database. Um, so all you're going to have to do is click it. And when it prompts, go ahead and connect to the database. And what you're going to see is uh, basically a search engine. Uh, if, you've, if you used Google or anything else, you'd be very comfortable with it. Um, the difference is there's a bunch of limiters here. So first off, we'll see you can limit to full text articles, which means articles that you can read in their entirety. You can uh, limit to scholarly journals, which are academic, things that would help for a research paper rather than something common like People magazine. You can search specific publications. Um, you can come down here to number of pages and say you're looking for um, an article that uh, is, is nice and meaty for a paper. You can say, just show me things that are greater than, um, let's say, 10 pages long. And on the flip side, if you're getting all big heavy-duty stuff and you just want a brief overview of a topic, um, you can do the opposite. You could say, show me articles less than five pages. And that's going to um, be a convenient limiter in Academic Search Complete because it's going to uh, narrow down or, or broaden um, the size of article that you're getting. So uh, we've got some other stuff over here to the right. We've got, um, you can limit by date, um, additional publication limiter, all kinds of stuff. Um, you'll notice up here at the top that the search mode it defaults to is Boolean or phrase searching. Um, if you've never used a, an academic search engine before, this can sound kind of scary, uh, but it's not that scary at all. It's, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it, and, and I'll explain it to you kind of in a nutshell up here. Uh, Boolean operators link up keywords. That's all there is to it, and there's, there's basically three of them um, that you'll encounter over and over again, and those are and, or, and not. So I'll go ahead and type them out as a sort of a visual reference here. Um, those three words, and is going to narrow a big pool of results, or is going to expand, and not is going to throw out a search result. So let me show you what I mean um, by kind of playing with some keywords here. If we were doing a search for terrorism, we're probably going to get lots of results. So we may need to narrow that. So we'd have to think of other ideas, Terror like adding keywords. Uh, so you can see here I did terrorism in America. I could have done anything, New York, terrorism in Al-Qaeda. Um, the opposite of and is if you want to expand your results. If you did terrorism and you didn't get enough, so we could do terrorism or a synonym. Um, in my case, I chose to do terrorism or act of terror. And, and this also demonstrates the phrase searching aspect of that default search. Um, I put act of terror in quotes because it's a phrase. I, I don't want any of those words in any order. I want that phrase, um, act of terror. So that's why I use those quotes. Um, not is going to work uh, sort of similar. Uh, what it's going to do is throw out keywords. So if you're getting all articles about Al-Qaeda, you could say terrorism, not Al-Qaeda, and it'll throw out all of those articles. And you'll see that I did the same thing. I free searched Al-Qaeda because it's multiple words. Anytime you've got multiple words, like September 11th here, um, you put them in quotes, and that'll, that'll create a nice little free search. So not tosses those keywords. Nine times out of ten, you're going to end up using and to narrow down. So make sure you remember that one above the others. Um, before we go on, I want to click advanced search here under the search box just to show you some of these other options. And you'll see that um, the advanced search screen looks really similar, but you can do a few other things. You can limit by language or document type. You can also have more lines here to put in keywords. Um, separated by your boolean operator and there um, and even better than all that you've got this search of field so when you go to advanced search instead of just searching the whole record you can be um, very specific you can search um, you certainly can still search all the text in the record but you can also search the um, author you can search within um, just the title of the article um, you know all these categories that you see listed here you can search just within abstracts which are summaries of each article so um, you can do a lot of stuff from the advanced menu but for our purposes we'll just do a quick search here on the on the basic search screen so you'll notice the only thing I've limited is I've said I just want full text articles articles that I can uh, read on my computer at home so to show you how important narrowing down is I'm just gonna search terrorism just a basic search for one keyword. So you get your results here displayed, and if you look over to the left, you're going to see that we got almost 45,000 hits for terrorism. 
So you can see how important it is to narrow down. Um, first off, we can narrow down using some tools that the database gives us. Um, you see that you can limit by year, source types, um, all kinds of stuff. So um, you know you don't just have to limit by keyword all the time. Uh, if we scroll down here to the bottom, you'll see you have a literally um, almost infinite variety of things that you can use to narrow down your search. What we're going to do first, and what I would always recommend, is coming up here, and most times in college you're going to want scholarly journals rather than popular materials. So you can um, always limit by scholarly. Um, you can come up here and you can change your date. Um, I'll change it to 2001 um, going forward. Everything after September 11th on terrorism. And you'll see by making those two changes, we went way down. We've got 11,400 articles, which sounds better only because the first search was 45,000, but that's still a lot of articles. So you can come down here to source type, and you can see um, you know, almost, uh, almost 1,000 are book reviews. So we can click academic journals, and it'll throw out all those book reviews, and we'll just get journal articles. So there's over 10,000. So we're still going to have to narrow down using some keywords we think of, and that's how those Boolean operators work. So we're probably not just writing a whole paper on terrorism. We're probably talking about something specific, right? Um, so let's say we're writing about September 11th. We would just do terrorism and a phrase search for September 11th and hit search, and you're going to see much narrower results. We're down to 183. And I should point out, you can keep adding keywords, terrorism, September 11th, and uh, New York. You could have added uh, Rudy Giuliani, Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, any keywords you want. The more keywords you add, the more narrow your search results become. Um, and these are your search results. Over here to the right, you'll see we've got all academic journals. And I'll show you a bit of what you're looking at here is kind of a preview screen. So you'll see that uh, it's got the author names listed there for you. It's got all the publication data right after that, um, where it was published, when it was published, how long the article is. It even has a, has a DOI number down here on the second line if you need that for APA. So um, you've got a lot of uh, information right at your fingertips. You can also jump right to the article by clicking PDF uh, full text down here. Or you can add it to a folder, and we'll talk more about doing that towards the end of the video. But if you want to see the full article, you're just going to click right on it, and now you'll see an expanded view. It has all that same info, just in an easier-to-digest mode. You've got all your authors, um, a little bit of publication information, um, and then you've got that abstract down there at the bottom. Uh, that's really important. That's a nice uh, summary of the article. So if you've never heard abstract, that's basically all that means. It's a summary. So do check out that abstract before you take the time to read through the whole article, just to make sure the article is about what you think it is. Um, so you've got a tools menu off to the right. Uh, you can, add, again, add it to a folder. You can print these articles. Um, you can email them to yourself if, if you'd rather have it via email. You can save them. Um, one tool that people love in most databases, you're going to see some variation of this citation tool. So we hit cite, and the database cited this article for us. So if you were doing an APA paper, again, um, there's your APA citation. Uh, if you were doing Chicago, it's there, Harvard. If you had an MLA citation, here's your MLA citation. So it's as simple as being able to right click and copy and paste that citation right into your paper. So that's a big time saver. You do want to double check, I should point out, to make sure that those are accurate. Um, sometimes the, the database is a little off, but they should be um, close, close to perfect. So it'll still be a time saver even if you have to change a few things um, now and again on the citation. So. Um, once you decide you want to read the article, the PDF full text link is off to the left. You're just going to click that, and you'll open it up. Uh, sometimes they'll give you the option for HTML, and if they do that, I always recommend still taking the PDF because the PDF, if available, is, is what we're seeing here. It's a perfect copy of the article. Every page, um, color if it's in color, graphs and pictures if there are graphs and pictures, so it's, it's as complete a view of the article as you can possibly get. Um, just do remember if you want to save or print the article, it's a PDF, so scroll down to the bottom of the page and this little menu will pop up that will allow you to save or print or expand or contract, zoom in, zoom out on the article, all that fun stuff. So um, that's that little menu off to the bottom right that just pops up automatically. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and navigate back to our search results, and I did so just by clicking um, back to search results. Uh, so it's very easy, and if you want to start over, you can always just come back up here to the left and click that big EBSCO button, and it'll take you right back to the home page um, of the search engine, which is what I just did, because I want to show you a few other things. Um, up here in the upper left, I want to point out, if you click on Publications, this is kind of a neat feature. This will allow you to browse through all the different publications in this database, and it'll let you target search to you. So if you say you want to see if they have Rolling Stone, you can type it in and hit Browse, and then bam, here we go. We see they've got full text of Rolling Stone from 1990 to the current issue, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, that's a lot of Rolling Stone. So um, if you were interested in looking for a specific um, 
copy of Rolling Stone, you just go ahead and click the link and you'll see it has all the information about the magazine, who publishes it, where it's from. Um, and over here to the right, you'll see a long list of uh, each year that the database holds for, for this title. So you can see Rolling Stone goes back a ways. So if you were looking, say, for um, an article from uh, 1999, you could go ahead and click it and you're going to see each issue printed in 99 um, listed separately. So if you found the one you were looking for, you just click it and then every single article um, that was in there is going to pop up here and you have um, full access to it. In, um, you know, I use Rolling Stone as an example, but remember there's literally um, thousands of journals in here that you can do that with. So um, before I mentioned folder as an option, and you'll see up here in the upper right, you can click folder, and we didn't add anything to ours, but if we had, um, every article that we flagged for a folder would be right here. And what's neat about this is if you want, you can store these uh, for future use. You just have to create a free account, and then everything you add to your folder can, can be retained. And so to do that, you just click either sign in or sign in to EBSCOhost, um, and usually you log in with your little free login you make. If you haven't made one, you just click here where it says create a new account. And this works just like making a freebie Gmail or Yahoo address. Fill in your information, um, hit save changes, and then do make sure, as they suggest, that you remember your information because um, you know this is a third-party vendor here that you're that you're making a free account with. So the library is not going to know what um, EBSCO username and password you chose. So. One last thing I want to point out is there's a help menu up in the upper right hand corner of, of Academic Search Complete. And if you click it, uh, it's really helpful. It's a, it's a full user manual for this database. And uh, you can see just by a glance, there's a bunch of different categories here. Particularly helpful is this searching um, menu. Every little tip and trick that you can possibly imagine is in here. There you see Booleans. Um, that's what we went over before, remember, and, or, and not to separate your keywords. So if you forget that kind of stuff, don't be hesitant to click on the help menu. Almost every database has one up in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, that's Academic Search Complete.